Welcome back to Unbelievable English. Today, we're going to be talking about Colt Express, which is a super fun game, won a pretty big award, uh, and it's what we call a programming game. We're going to be in the Wild West, and we're going to send our cowboys, our, uh, our bandits, uh, through a train to try to steal as much as we can, both from the passengers of the train and from each other. We'll talk about what a programming game is, what programming means, and we'll talk about the game itself in just a second. So let's check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to Unbelievable English. I'm here with my very special guest, Minju, who's gonna help me to show you guys our game for today, Cult Express. So, as we're looking at Cult Express and you guys have a new view, you're looking down at the table and down at the game while we're talking about things, and I'll pick things up and show them to you as well while we go here. We're gonna talk about the components for the game. And in this game, we have a train. It's a beautiful cardboard train. It looks great. And it's got uh, a couple of the functions and features you've gotta know about it. Right now, this game is set up for two people. This game is set up for two people. Uh, We've got one extra car. There's some information we need to know about the cars. If you look ooh, inside the car, and I'll show it to you on this camera where I can see it better. Uh, inside the car, there's some numbers. And, ooh, boo, 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 boo. okay, so here, inside the car, there's some icons. There's a number and a picture. And that tells you how many of each kind of thing you're gonna put in each car. So we've got our train cars and we have our loot. So we have bags of money and we have jewels, gems. The gems are all worth the same amount. Gems are always worth 500. Gems are always worth 500. The, the bags of money differ in value. So sometimes it's gonna be 250, sometimes it's gonna be more. And we're going to randomly take number of bags and the number of gems for each car and put them in the car. So this first car wants three bags of, of uh, gold, so we're gonna put that in the car. The second car wants three bags of, go of gold and one gem, so we're gonna put those in there. And this last car, this is the baggage car, so it's gonna have a lot of stuff. It wants four bags of gold and one gem. And we're gonna put those in there like that. So that's kind of some of the setup for the game. Now, in terms of the players and the meeples, we have the sheriff. The sheriff is not somebody you want to meet when you play the game. He's gonna to try to hurt you. He's gonna to try to stop you from doing things because we're robbers. We're doing bad stuff. So the sheriff is gonna start the game up in the caboose, up in the first car. And he actually starts the game with a briefcase. This is a briefcase that's gonna be worth a lot of money. It's worth $1,000. So. Getting this is really good. You want to try to get that briefcase, but you got to be careful because it's hanging out with the sheriff, right? Then there are our player pieces. Here's my meeple. I'm going to be the blue guy today. And here's Minju's meeple. He, she's going to be the black guy. She's Django, and I'm Doc. Now, we have special powers, but... For today, we're not gonna talk about those. Those special asymmetric powers, we're not gonna deal with those uh, in this tutorial as we talk about the game. Now, each of us is going to get one bag of gold and we're gonna get one bag of gold worth $250. So everybody gets one bag of gold worth $250 and we're gonna put that right on our player sheet, like that. Now, there are two other things on our player sheets here. There is our gun, and that's represented by this deck of cards. This deck of cards has six cards in it, and that's one for each bullet that we have. So, you wanna take that deck of cards and you wanna put it right on the part of your player sheet that has the empty gun on it. If you can shoot 
all of your bullets. If you can shoot your bullets six times, you'll get an extra thousand dollars at the end of the game. So that's really nice. But it's very hard to do. Mm -hmm. And the other thing you have is your player cards. Now these cards are what you're going to be using to program, and we used that word before. This is a programming game, and we still haven't talked about what that means. But essentially, each one of these cards represents an action that you want your character to do. Does that make sense? Yep. So, for instance, we just talked about the gun. If I play this card, then I want my character to shoot somebody. Mm -hmm. You don't know who yet. And we'll talk about how that works when we talk about gameplay. But you get two of those shooting cards in your deck. You get one, or you actually get two uh, cards that let you rob somebody. So this lets you take gems from the cars. You have two cards that allow you to move. So you can move to the next car, either the car in front or the car behind the one that you're in. You have two cards that let you go up and down. And this is actually a really important part of the game. Not only can my character, let's see if you can see him. My character is in the middle car right now. Not only can my character go either to the car behind or the car in front, but my character can also, if I play one of these cards, climb up to the top of the train and walk around on the roof, which is pretty nice. And then I've got two other cards here, and these are special. I've got one card with a fist, and the card with the fist allows me to, if, if I am in the same place with another player, I can hit them so that they will drop one of their bags, and I will, and, and they'll drop it not onto my sheet actually, but onto the train, and then the next person to pick up in that spot can pick up your goal. You would lose your goal, Mindy. No, it's mine. Not anymore. You're a thief. I am a thief. That's the whole point of the game. Quit this the game. <laughs> Actually, I'm so glad you said that because this last card allows you to call the sheriff. This card lets you move the sheriff. So if you play this card, you can move the sheriff into the next car over. On the next. Yeah, you can't move him very far. You can only move him one at a time. Uh -huh. So if I play this card, he goes here, and then if you were to play it, you could either move him to the third car or back into the first car, the caboose. <laughs> <laughs> Are you cold? I'm are you scared of the sheriff? No, it's okay. <laughs> so those are the last two cards. You get ten cards. And what you're going to do is you're going to shuffle all of those cards up and you're going to uh, draw, I believe, six at a time. And again, we'll talk about that when we talk about gameplay. So you're going to have a, a hand of six cards and then you're going to play one card at a time. But your character's not going to do anything right away. Your character's not going to do anything until all of the cards have been played. Mm -hmm. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Now you'll see there's a couple more decks of cards out here for us to look at. Now we're not going to worry today about these cards. These cards are for a five or six player game. So we don't uh, care about those right now. Oh. We're going to take them and make them go away. Those aren't for us. What we care about are the cards for a two to four player game and the stop cards. And what we're going to do is we're going to be creating a scenario. We're going to be creating a story for our game. And these cards are the story. So this is the stop card. This is the very last one. And then we're going to choose a number of these two to four player cards to um, play out our story. Now, we'll talk about how many exactly we need when we talk about gameplay. But let's just say that we have four of these cards. And then what we'll do one at a time each card represents one round in the game. Does that make sense? So I'd turn over the first one, and this is a very straightforward card. We're simply going to have four rounds. Mm -hmm. Each round will play one card. So I've got my hand of six cards, I'll take one, I'll play it, and if 
if this is an open space like this, an empty spot like that, that means that we're gonna play it face up so everybody can see it. So I'll play a card and then you'll play a card. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do it again for the second round, the third round, and the fourth round. Mm -hmm. And then we'll actually do those actions in order. So we play the cards and then we'll flip the deck and play them in order and see what happens. Now, these cards are a little bit different each time. You'll notice there are some icons here. This symbol, if you can see it, that's a tunnel. That means when you're in a tunnel on a train, everything goes dark. You can't see anything anymore, mm -hmm. right? So I'm gonna play a card face up, but then I'm gonna play a card face down so you can't see it and you don't know what I've done. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna play a card face down too. And then there's another different symbol here, and I'll show it to both cameras. This symbol where it's kind of like two cards that have merged, there's no line in the middle. Oops, there's no line in the middle. That means that you're gonna play two cards in a row. So first I'll play two cards face up, uh -huh. and then you'll play two cards face up. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. And then there's something that'll happen, mm -hmm. and that's different for each game, and we're not gonna worry about that now. It's in the rule book. So let's see if there's anything else that we need to talk about. Oh, there's one more symbol here. This symbol, this one, that symbol means that you go in reverse order. So if I'm the first player and I've been going first the entire round, well then you'll go first. Uh -huh. And then I'll go second. Okay. And that's how that works. Got it. And then, yeah. And then the very last thing, is the end of the game. This is the stop card. This is the last scenario. And when you finish that, the game's over. Whoever has the most money at the end of the game is the winner. And that's really it. That's the whole game. The only other thing worth mentioning here that we haven't shown are these cards. These cards here. And these are the bullets that the sheriff is going to be using to shoot us. If the sheriff ever ends in the same place as one of us, if he's in the same card as one of us, he's gonna shoot us. So here he is, you guys can't see it, but he's in this, this train car, and I'll pick it up so you can see it. He's in this train car with me. <laughs> so he's gonna shoot me. And that just means he's gonna give me one of these cards and I have to put this card in my discard pile so that at the end of the round, when I reshuffle all my cards, it's going to be one of my cards. I won't be able to tell which one it is. You can't see which one is the bullet card. And then if I draw it, that's just an action I can't take. It's a dead card. So that means I have less options on my turn. I have less things that I can do in a round. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing if you shoot me, if Minju shoots me with one of her cards, this card goes into my discard pile and then it goes into my deck. And then if I draw it, I have less options. That's a dead card that I can't use. And that's just about all of the components for the game. The game comes with a couple of really cute little uh, canyons and mesas and uh, cacti. Um, and they're just for decoration. They actually have nothing to do with the game whatsoever. So that's that. That's our game. Those are all the components. We'll come back again soon in just a couple of minutes and we'll actually do some gameplay. But for now, bye. See you in a minute. Hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> uh, we're all ready to go here. We're pretty much set up for our game. We've got, I made a mistake when we, when we talked about the components. When you set up the game, you have your caboose and then one car per player. So this is a two-player game. We're going to have two cars set up. And then you have five uh, scenario cards. Now, the game has some specific scenarios you can choose to play. But in this game, we're just going to choose four random ones and a stop. I like using one stop. You don't have to. I do. So four scenarios and a stop. And that represents the five rounds of the game. You make sure those are nice and shuffled, except for the stop, because stop is at the end. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. And then you set those down so everybody can see them. We'll put them right there for now. 
and then you place your sheriff in the caboose, and then you decide on your first player. Who's, who's going to be the first player today? Of course you. I'm going to be the first player. Yeah. This is, why, this is why I invite her to play with me. She lets me go first. And the first player goes in the caboose, goes in the rearmost car, and then the second player goes in the second car. Just like that. Two, well, you got to be careful. That sheriff is there. So did you shuffle your cards? Did you shuffle your deck? You're going to shuffle your deck. And you're going to draw six cards. So we're going to have six cards to start the game. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to take those six cards. We're going to take a look at them. So you know what you've got, what your options are. And then we're going to play our first scenario. You ready? Scenario. Did you take six? Um, Don't take ten. <laughs> what are you doing, you cheater? <laughs> take six. Six <laughs> cards. That's how many you get. You get six. That's it. Six. Uh, sorry. Cheater. <laughs> so you take your six cards. You set them up so you can look at them. Ooh. And then I'm going to flip over our first scenario so we can see what we've got here. And it's an interesting one. I like this one. So when we play here at Unbelievable... Uh, especially in the first couple of times that we play, we're going to ignore that bottom picture. But that bottom picture is a special thing that happens in the round if you're playing the advanced game. In the early game, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to worry about the four random um, uh, things. Now, when you have a card placement, <laughs> when we have a card placement turn, um, you have two choices. Okay. You can either place a card down or you can choose to draw three cards. Mm. So if you don't like mm. the cards you have and your options, you can draw three more. Mm. Right? So I'm going to go first. I'm the first player. And this first one is just out in the open. So I'm going to choose a card to play. And I like where I am. I've got lots of gems and money and stuff in the card that I'm in. So I'm going to play this card. But again, I'm not going to do anything yet. I'm not actually going to move my character. I'm just going to play the card. And now it's your turn. Same idea. So you're doing the same thing. You're going to cover <laughs> that. You're going to cover my card. Now, when we go to the second round, this is where things can start to get interesting because this is the, the move in the tunnel. So you're going to choose and you're going to secretly do something. So you're going to take your card, and you're not going to show it to anybody else. You're going to put it face down, just like that. There you go. That's it. So that's our second, and then we have two more. So I'm going to go next, uh, and I'm going to... You know what? I'm going to draw three cards. I don't like what I have here. So I'm not going to put a card down for this. I'm just going to take three cards and put them into my hand right here. And it's your turn. O open, right? Yeah. So now we're, we're back into playing cards open. Okay. Uh, and now this is the last turn. And I'm going to steal one more time. <laughs> one effect again? That lets you move the sheriff one space. One space? Yeah. Bah! What, is, what are you doing? What are you doing? So that was, we did all four rounds, right? All four turns. So this round is over. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that stack of cards. We're going to flip it over. And then we're going to start playing them. So let's see what the first action is. The first action is me stealing something. Mm. So I'm going to take yes, this gem right out from my the, the car that I'm in. And I'm just going to put it on my sheet like that. Mm -hmm. Now it's your turn. And you're going to steal as well. So what do you want to steal? I have a gem, of course. A gem. So you're going to take that gem from your car and put it on your sheet. And that can go into your discard pile. And now, uh-oh, I moved the sheriff. So <laughs> when the sheriff moves, no! 
he shoots you. Right next to me? Too and, fast. And you run away. So, the sheriff has moved into the car with Minju. Let's show that to everybody. And this is really important because the sheriff has shot Minju and now Minju has to run away and she runs to the top of the train car like that. So Minju has run to the top of the train car. So that's what happens when you play that sheriff card. Not very nice, is it? And then, oh, oh no, oh no. And this is why this game is so much fun and so great. Fun because is not fun. <laughs> Minju thought that this was a really smart idea. She was gonna climb up to the roof and then she was going to move the sheriff. But now, Minju climbs down. <laughs> okay. She gets shot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then she climbs up again. <laughs> Just like that. And that's the whole point of the, the whole point of this game is that it's ridiculous and funny. And the whole point of this game for us here at Unbelievable English is we're going to be using the perfect tenses to talk about it. We're going to be saying, I had done that because I tried to do that. Lots of great English to come out of this. But anyway, let's see what's going to happen next. And now you're going to move. So you have a choice. Do you want to move up here or do you want to move to the top of the caboose? Or do you want to move here to the top of the uh, back car, the, the yeah. baggage car? Yeah, that's a good move. Because that puts you in a position to try to get that suitcase, right? <laughs> so we throw away your card and we look at the next card and that's me stealing again. Hooray for stealing. Uh, so there are no gems in my car anymore. I'm just gonna take a bag of gold. And then last card, now this is gonna hurt me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes! yes. So, this is going to be painful for me, but here's the last card, and it's the sheriff, and now you get to decide where the sheriff goes. The sheriff can either go back here, which is what I think you should do. He can go back to the caboose, or he can move to the back of the train. I don't think she wants to do that. No! <laughs> no! No! Ugh. So I get shot, and I have to run to the top of the car. And that's the end of the first round. The first round is over, and we would just take this card, put it to the side, turn over the next one, take all of those cards we just played, take all of the cards from our hand, put them with any card that didn't get used, shuffle, redraw six, and then we'd start from where we were and we'd go again. And this is how you play the game. Now, we haven't seen anybody get shot. We'll play a little bit longer and, and just maybe do one more round for everybody. What do you think? Does that sound good? And we'll, we'll try to speed it up maybe. So we'll draw six cards. I've got my six cards. Uh, you have your six cards. We're ready to go. Yeah. Now, when you shoot somebody in this game, because we haven't shot anybody yet, we should talk about this. When you're on the roof, you can shoot as far as you want in either direction. You can't shoot down unless you have a special power and that's, mm -hmm. we're not gonna talk about special powers in this, in this tutorial. But right now, if I were to shoot, I could hit you and you could hit me. Mm -hmm. If there were two players in that car, I would choose which one I wanted to shoot. Um, if, there, if we were like this and there was another player here on this side, then you could choose which one you wanted to shoot. Mm. But if there was a player here and then me, you would not be able to shoot me. You'd have to shoot the player here. Oh, why? You have to shoot the closest player. Oh, in the Matrix movie, they like this. This is not the Matrix board game. This is Colt Express. Boring. 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 Not boring. You were just <laughs> laughing in the first round. Thank you very much. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that when you shoot from inside the train cars, you can either shoot somebody in the same car with you, or you can shoot somebody in the next car over. You can't shoot through multiple cars. That doesn't work. And then the, the last thing I wanted to talk about, we talked a little bit when we talked about components, we talked about the punching card, where you drop a bag of gold. What I didn't mention is that when you punch somebody and they drop a bag of gold, they also get knocked into the next car. Mm. 
So if we're in the same car and I punch you, you drop your gold right there and then you get knocked right there. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. So having said all that, let's do our second round. Mm. All right. So let's see. What do you want to do? What are you going to play? I'm, uh, I was the first player last time, so you get to be the first player this time. Oh, really? Yeah. It's your turn. I see you're climbing down. <laughs> no! Oh, no. See, guys. See? Oh. This is terrible. This is really bad news. No, this genius oh. news. Oh, no. What am I going to do? Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move. And now uh, we're going to play cards in the in the tunnel. So we're going to go face down so you don't have to show me what you're doing. And if you don't like your cards, remember, you can draw three new ones if you want to. That's always an option. Ooh, you played a card face down. Um, and now I'm going to play a card face down. And it's your turn. Now we're going face up this time. All right, and I'm gonna use that card. And now we're gonna go face down. It's fine, is it right? No, no, we're, we're in our, so this is, this this card has one, two, three, four, five rounds oh. in it. So we're in the third round, or we, no, we're in the fourth round now, because you're the first player, sorry. So you, you're gonna play a card face down this time. You're gonna draw three, okay. Well, then I'm gonna play a card face down. And now we're in the final round, and you can play a card face up if you'd like to. What are you gonna do? Revenge make revenge. Revenge makes revenge? Oh no! <laughs> oh, look at the size of your gun, you got a big gun. She's gonna shoot me, that's because terrible. Because you're Django. Because you're Django? Django. Django, Django. Well, then I guess the only thing I can do is run away. I don't have any choices. It's the last card there. So let's play out this round. This will be the last round that we play for this tutorial. And then Minju and I will probably keep playing for fun because it's a great game. So let's see. Let's play the first card. And you are going to climb down. You're climbing down. I'm actually going to put that like that so everybody can see it. All right. So that was your first card. What's my first card? My first card is to move away from that sheriff. Mistake. I didn't uh oh, play. you played you played a bullet card. Dude, right? <laughs> ah. So that's nothing. Nothing happens. Yeah. So uh, and <laughs> we can just put these back in our uh, discard piles as we go here. And then I'm going to play this card, which is going to let me climb down. And that's actually another part of what makes this game so great because when you make a mistake, you don't know right away. You only find out when you play things out. So it's it's interesting and funny. Ah. And then Django's gonna move. Oh no, Django, you're moving. Where do you wanna move? <laughs> no choice. You don't have any choice. You have to come into the car with me. Hey. And then I'm gonna shoot you. So here's here's a card for your discard pile. And then I'm gonna shoot hey. you again. So here's a card for your discard <laughs> pile. <laughs> you didn't get the suitcase. Yes. And then you're gonna shoot me, which is very sad. So I'm gonna take one of your bullet cards and put it in my discard pile. And then I'm gonna run away like a coward. And that's the end of the round. And that's how you play this game. It's, it's silly, it's fun. Um, and whoever has the most cash at the end is the winner. What do you think? Maybe Jungle is a real man because he's so tough. Because, because he's so tough, he just yeah. left that briefcase there. <laughs> and then, and then, uh -huh. plus, uh -huh. He directly go to the show. <laughs> he just walked into the bullet. He's like, come on, shoot me. Boom, boom, boom. So there you go. That's uh, <laughs> that's uh, Colt Express. And one more time, scoring, just so everybody remembers, it's just based on how much money you have at the end of the game. You look at all of your gems, all of your bags of gold, and if you've got any extras and you count it all, the person who has the most money is the winner. So thanks for hanging out with us. I hope you like this new 
uh, format, this new way of showing you how to play games. We're trying something different. Let us know how you like it in the comments. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much, Minjin. Will you come and do this again with me soon? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.